Yeah, I was pretty much wrong about all my biases about Newfoundland. If you're going to Newfoundland, you are in luck, because this place is something else. Here's a quick guide for what I think is worth your time, how you can go about your trip, and what makes this place so special. This summer, I traveled to Newfoundland for two weeks. Me and my wife, we flew to St. John's, and there, we bought a beast. A 1983 Chevrolet G10 camper van, and it is a brute. <laughs> St. John's has some charm, it's a small town. I recommend spending one day in St. John's. Make sure that you visit Water Street and the pubs there where the Irish legacy is apparent. See the colorful houses and perhaps visit Signal Hill to get a view of St. John's. Hopefully, if it's not too foggy. Just north of Signal Hill is Kididiri, which is a beautiful little spot and they have a brewery and a patio that is definitely worth a visit. Moving out from St. John's, I would suggest take Highway 10 south and move down to Mistaken Point. There is not only a national park with beautiful meadow, ragged cliffs and most likely fog, but also remnants of some of the earliest life form discovered in the world. You book a tour at the Edge of Avalon Interpretation Center and if you are in luck, you will get a tour guide that speaks fluent Newfoundlandish. With the tour guide, you drive out to the place, you walk, through the national park. Most likely you will experience all the different seasons <laughs> in this one hour. It takes you to go out to these cliffs where you can find these fossils. These fossils date back 600 million years. And just to get a grip how old that is, take trilobites, which is one of the more common fossils, I guess. They are often 300 million years old. These fossils are twice as old. After Mistaken Point, we had the north, and we went to Bacaliu and Dildo. These places are both nice, but they're not that nice. <laughs> However, I personally wouldn't recommend doing them. Instead, head west. Bonavista and Elliston is supposedly some of the best places on the island to see puffins. And who doesn't like puffins? Everyone likes puffins. Puffins are great. If you don't like puffins, there is seriously something wrong with you because puffins are great. We, however, didn't see any puffins, <laughs> which is a bit of a disappointment. Uh, it was very windy that day and the puffins were residing out on a rock. I could just like barely see them. They were like nesting there or something. I met a couple who had been there the day before and a puffin had crawled up on one's arm and stuff. And it's like, yeah, good for you. <laughs> I'm very happy for you, which says that, yeah, you can see puffins there very often. I, however, not that lucky. Moving on, we continued north up to Twillingate. The road leading up to Twillingate is, is so cozy, in lack of a better word. The road follows nature and goes across many small islands. And at the end is the small town of Twillingate. And this place is a must stop on your trip exploring Newfoundland. Although small, they have a brewery, they have a theater, and they have a winery that makes uh, wine from berries and other stuff that grows on the island. <laughs> but the best part of Twillingate is the nature. They have some amazing cliffs there. We went there during the sunset and it was mesmerizing. It really was. I, I cannot stress enough how beautiful that place was. It was one of my favorite places in all of Newfoundland. From here, you can go to Fogo Island. We decided not to go to Fogo Island because it would take too much of our time. It would be an additional cost. We thought that the landscape was sort of similar as the one with Twillingate. Plus, we also watched the episode of Still Standing when he visited Fogo Island. So there you go. <laughs> Off to Twillingate, our car broke down. <laughs> So we lost two days and we couldn't do the very top of the island and experience some of the earliest proof of Vikings on this continent. It's a shame. Everyone that's been there said that it's very much worth the visit. So I can recommend you going, although I have not been. However, we did Gross Morn. For you who don't know Gross Morn, it is a national park of Canada. It is a natural heritage. No, it's a world. It's a world heritage site and it's one of very few places in the world where you can see the Earth's mantle. This surreal experience of never being closer to Earth, yet you feel like you're walking on Mars. 
It's very cool because just an hour and a half north of the tablelands where you have the Earth's mantle, you can see a polar opposite landscape. It is a remarkable place because you walk for quite a bit and the landscape is all flat. And then when you reach the ferry terminal, the landscape opens up and you see this big mountains. It doesn't make any sense and that's so wonderful about it. We were very lucky during our trip because we managed to see one bear and one moose. I think it was Canadian, it was a Canadian moose we saw. During the ferry ride, we had two amazing tour guides. They were so professional and they were so Newfoundlandish in their way. They were very warm, they were funny. And at the end of the tour, when we were heading back, they started to play music and everything turned into a big kitchen party. And for you who don't know what a kitchen party is, it's a very East Coast thing. And everyone was so happy. <laughs> like The mood on the ferry was 10 out of 10. Everyone was having a blast. After saying goodbye to Gross Moor, we continue down south. This is a part of the island with a large French-speaking community. And at the very end, there is a bread oven that serves fresh and free bread. Free bread happens to be my favorite bread, but maybe you're not that into free bread and that's okay. This place is still worth a visit because the cliffs and the water here, that is something to see. After this, our journey came to an end. We took the ferry from Port of Basque to Cape Breton and to the rest of Canada. To sum up Newfoundland, I was pretty much wrong about all my presumptions. I thought that the capital was going to be closer to the rest of Canada because in my head that makes sense, but no, it's the furthest part away from the rest of Canada. Which makes sense because this is an old city, obviously it has a lot to do with fishing, connection to Europe. And also the rest of the towns, I thought that since Newfoundland is located pretty far up north, I thought, well of course they're gonna be on the south part of the island. No, all of them are located pretty much on the north part of the island. My last misunderstanding of Newfoundland was the size of the province. Looking at a map of Canada, it's one of the smaller provinces, but a small part of Canada is a large part of the world, if that makes any sense. Last comment on Newfoundland, I can say this. It is a place of polar opposites. Dramatic landscapes of highs and lows competing with each other, and you have the ruggedness, the coldness, and the fog that really gets into your bones, but it melts from the warmth of all the people. Newfoundland, it's a crazy place. But if you can go, go. You're scaring me, you know that shit.